Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-Level Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of biological molecules, and in particular, proteins. I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-Level Biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson 4 of 8 in this tutorial, covering proteins. This is the fourth video in our series of 8 lessons on the topic of biological molecules. In the last lesson, we looked at lipids and their different functions in the body. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. The first is to look at the structures of proteins and how we can detect them. We will then look at the biological roles of proteins in the body. Here are the AQA specification points for today's lesson. We will start off by looking at amino acids. There are 20 amino acids and they all have very similar structures. They all have one type of general structure. On one end, they contain an amine group, which is NH2. This is sometimes called the N-terminus. On the opposite end, they contain a carboxyl group, ending in COOH, which makes them an acid. This is known as the C-terminus. The central carbon atom is bonded to one hydrogen atom and a variable R group. Now we will look at the condensation reactions between amino acids. Condensation reactions lead to the formation of strong covalent bonds, called peptide bonds, which hold the amino acids together. Water is also released during this reaction. Two amino acids linked to each other are known as a dipeptide. Several amino acids linked together are known as polypeptides. Here's a simplistic version of peptide bond formation. Two glycines will come together to form one peptide, with water being given off. Now let's look at what's actually going on here. Here, we have two glycines. Here, we can see that the water has been formed and the two amino acids have joined together. Proteins will consist of one or more polypeptides. Peptide bonds can be broken down by hydrolysis reactions. This can break proteins and peptides down to their constituent amino acids. Our next point is to look at the 20 common amino acids. Let's go back to our general structure and focus more closely on the R group. The 20 common amino acids present in all living organisms differ only in the R group. This variable group is what gives each amino acid its unique chemical and physical properties. This group is also commonly known as a side chain. Different amino acids can be grouped together based on these. Glycine is the smallest amino acid. Its R group is simply a hydrogen atom, as shown here. There's no need to memorise all 20 common amino acids. Just understand how they differ. Now we will cover the range of functions of proteins. There are four levels of protein structure, primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. Their representations are shown here. We can go from primary to secondary to tertiary and finally reach quaternary structure. The primary structure of a protein is the sequence of amino acid that makes up its polypeptide chains. 
it's flat and 2D. In the secondary structure, hydrogen bonds between the different amino acids in the chain are responsible. Coiling will cause alpha helices, and folding will form beta pleated sheets. Make sure you remember how hydrogen bonds work. The secondary structure of a protein can be further folded or coiled into a tertiary structure. Tertiary structure can involve further coiling and folding. It involves four types of bonds, ionic, hydrophobic forces, disulfide bridges, and hydrogen bonds. Ionic bonds will result from the electrostatic attractions between the ions contributing to the folding. Disulfide bonds will form between the cysteine residues. Hydrophobic forces are very key. Hydrophobic amino acids are repelled from water. Therefore, they get pushed inside the protein due to the water molecules in their environment. Proteins consisting of only one polypeptide chain will have tertiary structure as their final structure. However, we can also have quaternary structure, which refers to the way in which different polypeptide chains come together to form a final protein structure. Some proteins only have one polypeptide chain, but those with multiple chains will undergo additional folding. These different polypeptide chains coming together to form the final protein are typically bonded together via hydrogen bonds, covalent bonds, or ionic bonds. Proteins can be dimers, trimers, or tetramers, depending on the number of polypeptide chains they are made of. They can also be homomers or heteromers. For example, haemoglobin is a tetrameric heteromer. Here, we can see some different types of quaternary proteins. Now we will look at how to detect proteins. We can use the Biorette test in order to detect the presence of proteins. The solution needs to be alkaline. To make it alkaline, we'll add a few drops of sodium hydroxide, which is a base. Next, we need to add a few drops of aqueous copper 2 sulfate to the test solution. We can then observe the colour change. If the solution is still blue, this means there is no protein present. However, if there is protein, the solution will turn purple. Our final point is to look at the properties of proteins. There are four types of functions as shown here. The first is enzymes. Enzymes can be large or they can be compact depending on the substrates to which they bind. Enzymes are usually soluble in water. Enzymes work by reducing the activation energy of a chemical reaction by binding directly to one or more substrates. Most enzymes are capable of binding only to a very unique substrate. Therefore, the shape of an enzyme directly impacts and determines its biological function. Antibodies will play a critical role in immune response. They directly recognise and bind to the unique antigens on the surfaces of foreign pathogens, such as bacteria and viruses. Each antibody has a unique shape, allowing it to only bind to the antigen it's designed to bind to. This is called complementary. The structural specificity of the antibody is determined by something called a variable region. Transport proteins will regulate what enters and exits a cell. The structure of a transport protein will determine its transport properties. For example, aquaporins are responsible for moving water molecules into and out of cells. Structural proteins provide structure to a cell or organism. This means that they have to have flawless structural stability. Some examples are keratin in hair 
and collagen in cartilage. Most structural proteins contain covalent bonds. This will link together the long polypeptide chains that run next to each other. We've now covered all the specification points for this section. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything that you feel unsure about. Let's go through our take-home points. We found out that proteins are made up of monomers, called amino acids. And these can be differentiated by their R groups. We also know that they're linked by peptide bonds. And that proteins are made up of one or more polypeptide chains. We looked at the structures of proteins and how to detect them. Finally, we looked at their roles. We've now completed lesson four. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of the topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-level biology series, or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.